grab your coat and get your hat and leave your worries on the doorstep life can be so sweet on the sunny side So sweet on the sunny side of the street. I used to walk in the shade with my blues on parade, but I, I'm not afraid. This I'll be as rich as Rockefeller Gold dust on my feet On the sunny side of the street Alright, so like all of those chord progressions kind of follow the circle of fifths. Hey everyone. Those are, those are chord progressions that we call from the Great American Songbook. Most of the music, popular music in America, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, follows major scale constructions, which are, I mean, I'm warning you now, this is gonna get kind of nerdy for those of you that are musicians, but those of you are, that you are that are, for those of you that are mathematicians, you're gonna appreciate this. What if in music there were, there, what, if, what if music there was a hierarchical relationship between the notes. So for every note, there would be a yin and yang. You know what I mean, Mom? So every note, instead of it just living by itself alone, there, there might be, let's say if C is a male, there might be a female equivalent of that note. And they work together. A yin and yang. Often, you know, when we think of the major scale, like that piece I just played there, Grab your coat. Starts on the three, three, two, one. Uh, again, a lot of this music is of America. The music of the Western world is, is based around chords, based around the major scale. Uh, the chords move in fifths. So what if we looked at the notes? And a lot of times when you, well most of the time when you think of a scale, you're going up like that. What if you had a negative image of that, a mirror image of that going down, so that for every note, I'm gonna show you what negative harmony means in several ways of looking at it. So if we start on C, normally we go up a whole step. Okay, this is gonna be very interesting. What if we were to go down a whole step? We would take the same formula and flip it and go down a step. What notes would we, would, would result? It's very interesting how this comes out. And again, I only like using math or concepts to maybe open up possibilities, open up our ears to things that we maybe couldn't hear just by our ear alone. And it's kind of like architecture. You know, you, you can't just build a building. I mean, you could just build a building by feel, but if you really know how a building is constructed, you can do a lot, of, lot with it creatively. So same thing with music. And I've had this argument for years with musician friends of mine who don't like theory. <laughs> Um, I am not saying that I don't play by ear. I'm not saying that I have anything against playing by ear. I love playing by ear. I love just experimenting and seeing what comes up and following my ear without having any uh, attendance to to theory, okay? So, so this is just another way of experimenting and finding sounds that we like. And I think it's very interesting, you'll see when I go through this, that the sounds will be very familiar to you based on this math. I mean, the fact of it is, is that we live in a world where there are sounds around us, and there is the fact of physics that sounds vibrate, right, at frequencies, and there's math in that. The way I'm speaking right now, the tones that I'm making, 
there is a fundamental, there's an overtone series. So there's math all around us, and it's kind of cool to just dive in and look at that. So back to my talking about negative harmony, if you look at a scale going up, major scale, you could, you could do this with any scale. How would you how, represent that scale, the mirror image of that scale? Instead of going up, you would take the same formula going down. So start on C, we would normally go up to a D, which is a whole step. So if I go down a whole step, now we got a B flat. And then another whole step up to the E. So I go down and I get an A flat. Now I go a half step up to F. Now I got G. Now we go a whole step up to G. That gives me F on the going down version, the, the negative version. Now we go up a whole step. If I'm going up, now we go down a whole step. That gives me the E flat. Then I go up a whole step, right? That's right. Up a whole step, then I would get a D flat going down, and then up a whole step back to the home, C, this back to one. So if I look at the notes, sort of the mirror image notes going down, what that gives me is a C, you everybody know what that is? A C Phrygian scale. So it's almost as if the missing notes came into being with that mirror image. It's sort of the yin and yang relationship. So, so uh, going up, it's a C major scale. If I take the same formula and go backwards, I get that. So that's one way of looking at negative harmony. Number two, the second way to look at it, and I'll try to show you on the keyboard here, is if we think of a major scale, we think of harmony as, as notes occurring. I'm going to talk about the access. So if we're, we're talking about C major, okay, we're going to take an access of between C and G for this example. And I guess you could move the access around, but it's, it's kind of like the midway point. So for every note, each note's going to have its negative version or its sort of yin-yang version. So C is, is going to become G and G is going to become C. And this, this will make sense later, <laughs> but bear with me here, and I'll explain this. So now if I go up to the next note in the C major scale, that's D. Now if we look at D, it's a whole step above this C. So what I want to do for the image, I want it to be a whole step below the G axis. So D becomes F, all right? Now. So the relationship is a whole step lower than the G, F, okay? So I went up a whole step to get the D, and then a whole step down to get the F. Now if I keep going and I go to E, so we're, up, we're a, a major third above C. So to get its, par its, its um, negative image, mirror image, I would want to go a major third below the G, right? So E becomes E flat. Follow me here? Okay, F, we already know, becomes D. G becomes C. This is where it gets interesting. A, so A is a whole step above G. So to get its, para, its uh, negative image note, we're going to go a whole step below C. So that, so A becomes B flat or B becomes A flat, all right? So they are sort of like married to each other. Okay, now I'm gonna go up to B, and this is an interesting way of thinking of it, okay? So remember, we're talking about our axis between C and G. So the note B, by the way, if you're wondering why I have long nails, it's because I also play guitar. Okay, so we're, let's look at it this way. It's a major third above the G, right? So then, we need to go a major third below the C. That gives us the A flat. Pretty interesting. So, so another way of looking at it is you could have the B down here. The B is half step lower than C. So what would be a half step higher than G? A flat. So so B and A flat are they exchange with each other. They're mirror images of each other. So I already I went all the way up to B and then we're back to C. So I went through the notes of the major scale and I told you which notes they belong to, which notes they, they flip into the negative. So let's go this again. C becomes G, G becomes C. 
D becomes, this is on an axis between C and G. It's really important for you to understand that. So D becomes F, E becomes E flat. That one I didn't understand at first, but E becomes E flat because what? We're up a major third and then we're down a major third. F becomes D, G becomes C, A becomes B flat, right? Because it's a whole step above G, so we need to be a whole step below C. And then B becomes A flat. And I wouldn't say it becomes, I'm saying, let's, let's put it this way. Uh, these notes have a partner. Let's think of it that way. So, so B's partner note is A flat. Now you notice there might have been a couple notes missing that you kind of find chromatically in the key of C. I'm going to use this in my harmony example. So we didn't talk about F sharp, right? Which is halfway between the tritone, right? Halfway between this. So let's think about this. On the axis between C and G, we've got F, what would F sharp become? So we're, we're, we are a half step lower here, so then we need to be a half step higher here. So F sharp and D flat are partners. And once you memorize this, you can have start having fun with harmony. And you'll find that... I'll show you what you'll find. Let's, let's just take a really common progression. Let's just take uh, G7 going to C, right? That would be, like I said at the beginning of the video, this would be a harmony moving in the circle of fifths, right? So we're going that kind of deal, right? What if I were to take all of those notes in each of the chords and change them to their partner notes? All right, let's do that. So, so this G7 chord here, all right, is going to become an F minor 6 chord. You're going, what the heck? What do you mean? Well, okay, let me explain. So D becomes F, right? D becomes F. F becomes D, so those stay the same. That G becomes a C, and that B becomes its partner notes A flat. All right. So the F minor six, or D minor seven flat five, however you want to call it. Okay, so G when it's flipped into its partner notes becomes F minor six, and it sounds like this. So so we had the the G going to the C, simple progression, right? So now we're gonna play the the yang of the yin we're going to change it to f minor six resolving to c so then we have this minor four plagal cadence so we're already seeing that okay we were having a fifth relationship progression now turning to a fourth call plagal resolution right so now we have now this is where it gets really interesting so i already can tell that if you take chord progressions moving through a circle of fifths, when you flip them, when you take all the notes and translate those notes to their partner notes, the per fifths progression, sur progressions moving around circle of fifths all of a sudden start moving around fourths. And it's a very pleasing sound when we're so used to hearing everything being like this all of a sudden. Then we have, all the, then we have progressions that start sounding like this. Right? Kind of sounds rock and roll, right? So what was that? We were in the key of C. I went B flat, F. All right. So let's let's take this a little further. What about the progression that is 5 of 5, 5, 1? Let's try that. What would that sound like if I translated all the notes? I'm just going to show it to you really quick. So here's a normal circle of fifths progression, right? So five of five, or if you, in, in folk music, they would just call it the two chord, right? You got this nice chromatic tone, F sharp coming in here, going to a G7, going to one. Now, if I were to translate all those, I'm gonna show you what is really cool. And it sounds so familiar. If I were to translate the first two chords into their negative harmony counterparts, it sounds like this. Watch this. If I play this over, I only have one hand available. It sounds more interesting when you play it over a pedal. So, so here's 
the 2-5. Now if I translate the first two chords to their partner chords, negative harmony, like the mirror image, it's going to sound like this. And then we've got a B flat minor sixth, check this out, doesn't that sound like Brahms or Chopin? Check it out, isn't that cool? I love it. And you could actually go to another key. So, let me show you here on the keyboard. This is what's cool about it. So you've got, originally you got this. Okay, so this chord, the D7, remember F sharp becomes D flat, D becomes F, right? And then A becomes B flat, and then C becomes G. So, so you get a anytime anytime you have a dominant seventh chord, that's going to turn into a minor sixth chord. There's another way of looking at it. Okay, so we've got the D7. You can go back and figure this out later. Stop the video and watch it again. So F sharp becomes D flat. D becomes F. Okay, A becomes B flat. C becomes G. So we've got this B flat minor. Isn't that cool? And then check this out. This B, this D flat walks up. Isn't that nice? See so what you've got? This kind of cool motion going on here, which is you got a D flat, B flat. I really like it. So if we were in the key of C, this D flat thing. Check it out. Isn't that gorgeous? So you got B flat minor six. Go to F minor six. So you got it. maybe a better voice thing would be like this. Yeah, I really like that. <laughs> so anyway, um, the point of the negative harmony is not. I was talking with uh, Tommy Howard, a jazz guitarist. If you're improvising over circle of fifths progressions, which most jazz standards are, like the one I'm showing, uh, there's not, I mean, I don't really see how you can apply this negative harmony, but if you're, if you're writing a piece of music, this just gives you another set of colors to paint with, right? And so then you've got more plagal things going on instead of all these circle of fifths things. So that original progression sounds like that. Um, so have fun with that, see where you can go with that. And I love your comments, and I love, just let me know if this, uh, let me know if this had some effect on you, and your life, and your music writing. Um, yeah. I'm going to try one more, and let's see what we can come up with. Let's see if I have a progression. I'm, let's just stay in C to make it interesting. What if I go to a F? Let's go. What would that sound like if I did it with negative harmony? Now, again, I'm keeping the chord, this, the tonal center, C. But I could, what would the opposite of C be? It would be C minor, right? So as you can see, with the negative harmony, you're getting a lot of the parallel minor, or the parallel Phrygian chords. And that's very common in romantic music, right? A lot of times in Chopin, you'll hear it. minor key, you'll hear this, right? Right, so I just play what we call the, the flat two, which is the Neapolitan chord in first inversion. I'm sure many of you, if you've been on the earth long enough and heard classical music, this sounds very familiar to you. So uh, classical composers have been using this sort of what they call modal mixture thing for a long time. Um, and negative harmony is another way of looking at it. There's like a yin and a yang. So back to my example. If I were to move, let's, let's take let's take the whole progression and make a a negative version of it. So we got C, F, A minor to G. Okay. So C is going to become what? C minor. F is going to become 
B flat. Oh no, sorry, G minor. So the the parallel the negative chord or the partner chord of F is G minor. Alright, so we got C minor, G minor, and then I went A minor. So the partner chord of A minor is what? So A becomes B flat, C becomes G, E becomes E flat. So E flat. Okay, so we got C minor, G minor, E flat, and then G is going to be F minor. Back to C minor. So then, so our original progression is C, F, A minor. It's a little real pop, right? G. Okay, here's the partner chords, the, the yang of the yin. C minor, G minor. E flat. What was the last chord that I said? They get crazy. C minor, G minor, E flat, F minor. Now, if I throw some inversions in there, that makes it interesting, right? So let's say I'll start off. I'm just gonna play the same four chords over and over again. Let's see what variety I can get. Basically, the second progression that's in the minor is the negative image of the major progression. So it just just some interesting things to try to spice things up. Hope you enjoyed this kind of music theory nerdy talk, and I'd love to hear from you what you thought of it. Thanks for listening. Take care, and check out stringsattached.org if you haven't got on our list yet, or Strings in the Woods. It's all on Facebook. We've got two concerts coming up this week. Wednesday and Thursday. Grab your coat and get your hats. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street. Can't you hear that bitter bad? You know that happy.